Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now with this uh, understanding, let us try to see what is control and coordination. How can we define control and coordination? So can you see on the top, you can see there are some few people dancing. So whenever the word coordination comes, you can think of a group dance where you have multiple people who are dancing in synchronization with each other. So if um, they are doing the same step together, so they are all like synchronized. So that is called coordination when a particular thing is done in an organized way, in a synchronized way. So that is where coordination comes into picture. So synchronization between the different organs of the body so that they can work together in harmony to perform the vital activities of life. So this is very much important, working together, but at the same time there has to be a synchronization. For example, I, I was talking about the example that if you see a tiger behind you, then you will start running seeing the tiger. So if you see, there has to be a synchronization between different parts of the body. There has to be a correct synchronization between the eyes and the brain and the muscles. Now, what would happen if all these three start to function simultaneously? That will create, that might create a problem. Because the moment you see the tiger, your muscles started working so even before you could understand it is a tiger because that might not be a tiger because your brain is the one who's going to interpret what it is maybe it is not a tiger it is a friend of yours so after you see that person it is your brain who will tell you that okay is this your friend or is this a tiger or is this something else right so you have to wait for that response from the brain and once you get that response then your muscles should start working accordingly so there has to be a synchronization it is not that all the organs should start working together it is not like that so they have to be coordinating with each other and that coordination is provided by this nervous system and endocrine system so let us look at an example. So when you are playing football, so what do you think? Do you need any sort of synchronization between your hands and legs? Of course you need to do so. Your hands and your legs should be in proper synchronization with each other so that you can play or so that you can hit the ball properly. So if you can see here, you need a specific posture. I mean, the movements that need to be synchronized. Now, if you're... If you're going to kick the ball with your leg, it should not happen that just when you start kicking the ball, you take the ball, a ball in your hands. That should not happen, right? So when can you avoid that? When there is a proper synchronization between different parts of your body. Similarly, in this case, when you get an electric shock, you immediately jump off. So there was a synchronization between the feel, there, there was the, your sense organ actually felt that it is an electric shock. So your skin felt it, right? Now your skin sent that information to your brain. Then your brain told that, okay, you have to jump. Then your muscles jump, right? So there has to be synchronization between different parts of your body so that you can do the appropriate thing at the appropriate time. So now let us look at the coordination which takes place in different life forms, in different type of living organisms, how this coordination takes place. Now if you talk about animals, in animals we have nervous system where electric impulses are carried by nerve cells. So that means in case of animals, because see, as I said, that in order that the synchronization take place, the information need to be carried from one part of the body to another. So when you talk about the nervous system, the information is carried in the form of electric impulses. And who carries the electric impulses? They are carried by the nerve cells. Now there might be many questions in your mind that how electric impulses get generated, how they are carried by the nerve cells. So we will talk about all that when we discuss about the nervous system in detail. Now the, in nervous system the transmission is very fast. That is the electric impulses carried by the nerve cells are really really fast. 
That is why you would have seen that uh, as soon as you get an electric shock, you immediately jump off. You do not need much time to think that what you want to do next. So because the transmission is quite fast. Now, there are limitations of nervous system as well. For example, they can reach only the cells which are connected by nervous tissue because this is how the nervous system is. So you have so many nerves connecting different parts of the body. So that means only those cells which are connected by nervous tissue, only there the information can reach. It cannot reach somewhere which is not connected by the nervous tissue. Electric impulses cannot be continuously created and transmitted. Again, that is also true because these electric impulses are created only when a stimulus is received. What stimulus? Only when some changes are received. For example, when you um, touch something very hot. So that is a, like a stimulus. So when you touch something very hot, it is a stimulus or it is a change in the environment. So when you experience that an electric impulse gets generated and then that gets transmitted but that does not mean that all the time continuously some electric impulses get generated that does not happen as far as nervous system is concerned right now as i said here it cannot reach different cells because only the nerve cells have the specialized detectors which can detect the impulse now different parts of our body might have maybe some other tissues, connective tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, but those tissues do not have those specialized detectors so that they can detect the impulse. So if the cells are connected by nervous tissue, only then they can receive the electric impulses. Now, the, as I said, they cannot be, the electric impulses cannot be generated continuously. That's because once the impulse gets generated, then it starts to travel or it starts getting transmitted. So the cell would need some time to reset its mechanism to generate a new impulse. So there would be a time lag, right? Now, when you talk about something like some change like growth, so there all the cell grows. So the information should reach all the cells, but by using nervous system, it cannot reach all the cells. So growth cannot happen under the control of nervous system. So that is why we have another system that is endocrine system. Now what happens in endocrine system? So here chemicals are released by the stimulated cells and then the chemicals diffuse all around. Now as soon as you receive a stimulus or as soon as there is some change in the external environment, the cells get stimulated, that is the cells get activated or excited, whatever you call it. For example, if somebody pinches you, so what happens? He pinches you at a certain portion of your body. So the cells in that near that region of your body, they get stimulated or they get excited. Now what happens? Some chemicals are released in that region and these chemicals will start to diffuse around. So gradually it will start to spread all around and then these chemicals will again get transmitted. Now in this case, now you do not need specialized tissues to recognize those chemicals. Those chemicals can be reach each and every corner of the body. They can reach each and every cell of the body. But since it, it will gradually diffuse throughout the body, so the transmission is going to be slower. It is not going to be as fast as the electric impulse transmission in case of the nervous system. So here it has certain advantages when compared to nervous system. That is, it can reach all the cells of the body because you really don't need any specialized tissue to recognize the chemicals. And it is a continuous process because here uh, the chemicals are like get, getting generated. The chemicals once gets generated and then it's diffused. So you do not need any time lag. Maybe more and more chemicals can get generated and it will get diffused on its own. So you, there is no time lag involved here. So if you talk about growth now, now growth can happen with the help of growth hormones and growth hormones are nothing but chemicals. Those chemicals can diffuse to different parts of the body. It can reach all the cells and then all the cells can grow accordingly. And these growth hormones can be produced continuously because as I said, you do not need any specialized cells. You do not need any electric impulse generation and then conduction. So, so no, no of those complications are involved here but the demerit is that that the, by endocrine system the transmission is going to be slower now if you think of the endocrine system to take care of the scenario when you are getting an electric shock then sorry 
endocrine system will not be able to help you because that if the transmission is that slow by the time you will get to know that you have received an electric shock it will be like you will already be in danger right so there you need nervous system so wherever you want fast transmission wherever you want fast response to uh, any sort of stimulus their nervous system plays an important role so now let us look at the coordination in difference in case of plants so what happens in plants now they do not have any specialized muscular tissue or nervous tissue so the, the there is no question of having a nervous system in plants so how is it taken care it is completely taken care by chemicals so the coordination is all chemical coordination in plants now what sort of things do we observe which shows that there are coordination in plants as well for example when we say growth in case of animals we can actually visualize the growth similarly in case of plants also we see there are so many movements either related to growth or otherwise right so all these happens due to some chemicals present inside the plant because even for the growth of plants there has to be some communication which needs to take place inside the plant that is some, there has to be a communication or there has to be something which has to reach each and every cell of the plant so that each and every cell grows so the coordination in plant is completely controlled by chemicals so it is all chemical coordination in plants so now let us look at how coordination takes place in different animals now when i say different animals i mean a wide variety of animals starting from the lower animals like the sponges or the cilentrates the flatworms or the insects or the aquatic animals like the octopus starfish or if you talk about the vertebrates the land animals the huge ones like elephant lion human beings or birds and so many others so it has been observed that eat that in each of these group of organisms the structure as of the nervous system is different so the structure varies now as we go higher the system becomes more and more complex that is the nervous system the structure of the nervous system becomes more complex now when you talk about the unicellular organisms which are made up of a single cell for example the bacteria their one cell performs all the functions so there is no seen of any specialized tissues any specialized nervous tissue or nervous system at all because that one cell is going to perform all the activities of the body whether it is the excretion respiration or whatever but in multicellular organisms different groups of animals have different ways or different processes for coordination so we will now discuss in detail the coordination in human beings because human beings being a, a multicellular complex organism let us see how the nervous system is in case of human thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again